she could no longer look. He'd been tortured and then dissected. She couldn't work out at which point he'd died. His torso had been cut from neck to groin and pinned back. His eyes had been pierced with something. He lay in a pool of blood. Tara cupped her mouth. The bile rose to her throat. What the fuck was this? He was mad. She was standing next to a madman, shut in a room with him. She looked into his face. He was watching her intently, waiting for her reaction. Well, what do you think, Tara? Good, eh? He smugly toasted the wall with his glass and knocked back a slug of wine. Jesus, David, what the hell is this? Did you do this? Who is he? She suddenly felt faint. She was going to be sick. She turned to the door. Tara, you don't believe they're real, do you? Wow, that's great. That means they're very good. Hell no, they were just for a shoot. That guy, he's modelling, he's acting. Brilliant, isn't he? Fantastic makeup. So lifelike, he sniggered. And you fell for it. Brilliant stuff. His laugh unnerved her. Even if they were fake, the pictures were sick. How can he be proud of them? It was time she got out of there. She wasn't going to wait for Seb any longer. Enough was enough. Sorry, I've got to go, David. I can't wait for Seb any longer. She turned to the door, the airless room closing in on her. Uh, before you go, dear, take a look at this wall. It's not half as nasty. He reached up and pulled the cord of another spotlight which lit up the wall to their left. It had been in darkness. She hadn't noticed it. Still feeling giddy, she turned to see what he was talking about. A second mass of black and white shots leapt to life. She recognised them immediately as the same style of pictures given to the papers. Grainy and soft focus. Her wine glass dropped to the floor. There were hundreds of photographs, all of her, walking in the street, in the local coffee shop, coming out of her office, jumping into a taxi in her flat, cooking in her kitchen, on the sofa watching TV, chatting on the phone at her computer. Nothing was sacred. There were shots of her naked in her bathroom, bathing, showering, plucking her eyebrows, shaving her legs, on the toilet, wiping her ass. Then there were the shots of her in the bedroom. These must have been his favourites. They'd been blown up to a larger size print. She was sleeping, having sex. Her face contorted in ecstasy as her lover satisfied her. She recognised the bodies of Ed and Franco strewn across her in various poses. There was one body she didn't recognise. She stepped closer to the wall, searching for more pictures of the same body. Her hand went to her mouth in horror. She let out a small cry. It was David. David was fucking her in her bed, in her flat. How could this be? Oh, wasn't he gay? She let out a nervous laugh. It was another trick, superimposed with computer wizardry. Fuck him, how dare he? The bastard got off on this sort of shit. She turned to him. You bastard. It was you taking the pictures in the flat upstairs. You sent them to the papers. Who the fuck do you think you are? Before he had a chance to reply, her fist rained down on him in a torrent of fury. He hadn't expected this. She beat his face and chest hard as she could, shunting her knee up hard between his legs, jamming it into his groin. He doubled up in pain as his face went down. She used her knee again to kick up into his jaw, forcing his head upwards, throwing him backwards. He staggered and fell. Shocked at her sudden rush of power, she stood watching over him fall. What the fuck do I do now? She ran to the door, tugging at it. It was locked. Shit, where's the key? Give me the key, you bastard, before I fucking kill you. She stood over him, screaming like a woman possessed. He lay groaning on the floor, curled up in the fetal position, nursing the agonising pain in his genitals. She fell to her knees and scrambled through his pockets, all the while screaming at him to give her the key. There was no key. She needed a code number. Then it started to come from nowhere. She felt woozy, heavy, out of focus. Her body began to lose its strength. Something was wrong. She knew she had to keep going, to get out of there, but she couldn't move. She had no control. What the hell was going on? She lost consciousness and dropped to the floor in a heap beside David. About bloody time, he thought. They lay side by side in silence as he gathered his thoughts and waited for the pain in his balls to subside. Her knee kick to the jaw had sent his tooth through his tongue. He tasted the iron of blood in his mouth. Shit, she was a fighter. He turned to look at her. He'd planned the dosage almost perfectly. A few minutes earlier would have been better. He would make it stronger next time. 
He was going to have fun with this little vixen. <laughs>